the second essay that we can read uh, in your book is about the artistic process of uh, Mahmoud Saeed. And in an interview in 1951, he said, the emotional shock that a mother experiences when she feels her baby move in her womb for the first time. Um, can you explain us the artistic uh, process of Mahmoud Saeed and uh, whose inspiration was often taken from nature, like the human models? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a very strong statement. Uh what what he says here is 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 truly uh coming from a man it's even more um it has even more significance um and i think what what he means is that is in 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 front of a subject or in front of a landscape or a figure or a model um he he feels a certain power and um, uh, a unique power in creating um, something on a, on a, on a 2D uh, surface, but something that is as lively and as um, of, uh, full of emotions than a, a, a human figure or then than a mother that uh, has when she has her baby in her womb. Um, so I think it's more he's he's also giving himself credit as a creator of an artwork um, and how he can convey that. Um, and in terms of um, what, what inspired him or what he painted, I mean, there's all these sketchbooks of Mahmoud Saeed Nunes. So like the page you have up on the slide, um, he painted many, 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 uh, not painted, sorry, he, he sketched yes. many uh, nudes in different poses, really to examine and to explore all the body um, movements and how, uh, how, how, how to represent uh, the body in different poses and what these poses also express and uh, if, in what context they can be used. Um, and he would have studied um, uh, nudes um, a lot, even in when he was in France, when he studied uh, at uh, l'Académie Junior, but um, also with his friend uh, Angelo Poulos, who was another painter mm -hmm. um, in Alexandria, who was Greek. And he would have had access. We know that in his studio, he invited uh, nude models to come and sit for him and invited Mahmoud Said to, to come in um, and draw them or paint them. Uh, because in Mahmoud Said's uh, social uh, environment and in his house, it wouldn't have been accepted or tolerated that he brought in nude models to pose for him. Yeah. So, um, but given the number of nudes in Mahmoud Said's oeuvre, ironically, and also the number of uh, portraits of women, it, the female beauty and the female body in itself for Mahmoud Said was a really uh, a subject of fascination, but also that, that allowed him to explore uh, and to achieve what he was uh, seeking. So whether it's uh, capturing uh, the sitter's uh, emotions, whether it's playing with the light uh, and the reflection of light on, on, on the female nude body, for example. Um, so it's, it's his, I mean, when he's going back to this statement, the emotional shock that a mother experiences when she feels her baby move in her womb for the first time, is that he, even himself, he is moved in front of his subject and even more so in the process in, of, of uh, whilst he's painting, whilst he's drawing. And finally, at, when he's finished, completed the artwork, um, what emotions his own artwork brings it to him. So it is a whole process, I think with Mahmoud Said specifically, it's a whole process of different stages of emotions and feelings and how he expresses them as he works through the painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you said, the female mother was an important source of uh, inspiration uh, for him, such as uh, Nabawiya that yeah. we can see uh, here. Um, who were these, uh, these models? 
I mean, these were models who were paid to sit. So um, they, I mean, they were, you can see her features. They were often uh, lower class um, uh, young ladies who uh, were either servants um, or who were uh, street vendors. Um, so really women who were from, in a way from, from the the pure the the purest uh, form of uh, society in Egypt to be so that the models he was painting um, were really the closest to the Egyptian land in a way um, because they represent for Mahmoud Said um, a certain Egyptianness um, specific to these uh, women and that you can recognize from, for example, another um, a woman and, and the features he captures in his paintings uh, truly make them unique to this Egyptianness that he's seeking to uh, portray. Uh, but these models were, um, for Angelo Puros, they were models he would have um, hired and paid just to pose. Um, but often they were, I would say, I mean, we, we don't have much information on, on the model specifically, but most often they were servants and uh, they were asked to, to sit uh, for these artists. Mm -hmm. I think that, well, the ad advantage in a way, I would say it had is that it, it, was a, it was a passion, like he didn't, uh, I don't think he would have put it in his uh, family's face that he was painting all these nude uh, models and and women and I think in that way he was also respected just that he was doing that as a painter so I don't think I mean I don't think it would have been tolerated for him to have a nude model in his home yeah. but as in in his sphere as a painter it would have been tolerated because it would be happening for example in Angelou Poulou's studio um, and it was just part of his oeuvre um, and I think for him the, the the female nudes they were often either directly put in a private collection um, but they weren't like publicly displayed um, like other of his paintings they would have just been uh, more put to the side, but still respected because part of the artist of. Yeah. Uh, so in your uh, book, you employ the, the Italian uh, terms Modello and Bonzetto uh, for uh, Mahmoud Said's uh, of. What is the difference between these two uh, Italian words? So Bonzetto, Modello, I mean, I took these terms from uh, specifically from uh, Rubens and more the Italian uh, Renaissance artists um, because Rubens is a good example um, because he, the in order to, to he had a lot of he was an, a, a 17th century Flemish artist and he was very successful so he was uh, given a lot of commissions um, by royals but also by private collectors by very uh, rich aristocrats and so to keep up with the work he uh, would produce a bozzetto, which is a preliminary sketch uh, that really, it's as if he, the artist just jots down his ideas, but in a visual uh, way. So he visualizes what he's going to paint, but in a very sketchy way. Then he makes a modello out of it. So that's the next step. A modello is his bozzetto, so his initial preliminary sketch, developed with more um, details, uh, with the the main subject put probably into a scene and with a few hints of colors and uh, light and shade so that he gets a better idea of the distribution of um, uh, color and, and mass and solid masses. Um, and this is what Rubens did also for his commissions because then Rubens would give the modello to his studio who who would then replicate it on a much bigger scale and Rubens would contribute more or less to, to the final composition uh, and probably do the most uh, challenging and, and ambitious parts of the composition. 
but in Mahmoud Said, it's it's obviously it's all Mahmoud Said. He didn't have a studio. He painted everything by himself. But it's it's truly following the same process where you have uh, the uh, prelim preliminary sketches, which can just be um, the outline of a figure with probably two or three suggestions of a background, then uh, developed into a modello, which is um, so usually his preliminary sketches or bozzetto are done in charcoal, um, red chalk, or uh, or pencil or colored crayon on paper. Then the modello, which is the next step, he does it on cardboard or a small panel with oil. So with oil allowing him to get into more details. So this is a very good example. Uh, yeah, just start, yeah. So, uh, sorry to cut you off. But yeah, sorry. Uh, just, uh, just to tell you. So to illustrate uh, these uh, two Italian terms, uh, I selected this uh, painting from uh, Mahmoud Said La Ville that you worked on uh, in your book. So. Please illustrate these two terms. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a good example because for La Ville, there were four bozzetti um, done. So bozzetti, two sketches in, in this kind of um, style. So you can yeah. see that are, they're on paper, they're in pencil or colored crayon or charcoal. And he just, what does he do? He just draws the central group of figures of La Ville, which are the three women of Bahari, um, which is the, the focus of the composition, with a few other figures barely sketched in the background, suggested. And uh, he creates the perspective with a few architectural um, elements that he's put on the side and in the background. Yeah. So he manages to, it's just the, the, the La Ville, the, this painting for which the Bozzetti were done, it's a very complex uh, composition, not only because it's monumental, but also because there's lots of different things happening, different little scenes within a big scene happening. So he just wanted to distribute the figures and see what worked the, the best. And you can see how on the, the difference between the two drawings, how, for example, the figure um, selling the Argisu juice, uh, which is initially on the left side, uh, he's moved him onto the right side on the other drawing, and he's added a new figure with a cart. Um, so he's juggling with space. He's trying to find what works best um, whilst keeping his central, um, the central composition of the three women, but what works best around them. And this is exactly what a bozzetto is. Yeah. There are sketches to work around space, uh, understand how you're going to build your composition. So we know there's four of these for uh, La Ville. Uh, and then he produced two um, modelli, um, so which are, um, so this is one of them. This is the one in the Mahmoud Khalil Museum, yeah. um, which we believe is uh, the second one because uh, there's the one in uh, the embassy of the residence to the ambassador of Egypt to Stockholm, to Sweden. Um, there's one there, but which was interesting because we, we discovered it much later. And um, on the reverse of that one, uh, there's a specific inscription. So there it is here, actually. There's a specific inscription yeah. uh, that says, première esquisse. And esquisse is basically modello. So this, this is an oil painting on panel. Uh, and the first one is also an oil painting on cardboard, I believe, uh, on panel two, actually, sorry. Um, and here he goes much more into detail. In these two modellis, he goes much more into detail. Um, the final composition, you can see it in the one you have on the slide, the one in Stockholm, still have the figures are not uh, at the same places. So he's still yeah. juggling with uh, space. But you can see he's chosen his colors. He's emphasized a lot uh, the shades and the light that pierces through the, um, the composition. Um, and he's really um, determined what works best um, to frame this central group of the three women um, with those two figures of so the juice seller on the right and uh, the man with his child on the donkey on the left. Uh, all of this framed with these architectural elements that was in the Bozzetti in the beginning, but that he's elaborated uh, just as the background, he's um, put in a few more details 
uh, distributed the colors uh, chosen, uh, what goes where and who does what, to then um, replicate in a way, replicate and uh, go more into detail uh, for his final composition. Uh, so this one, which is hanging in the Museum of Modern Art in Cairo, um, where he, well, he elaborated what he had just done in his previous Modello. So it's very interesting. I think this example of La Ville is, is fascinating and it, it's quite rare to have, to, to be able to follow step one, step two, step three until the final stage and to really understand how uh, Mahmoud Said worked and what went through his head and what he was thinking. Yeah. The debate also that had the inner debate he had um, to, to, to see what works best, uh, what, um, what gives it a more harmonious um, uh, composition, uh, and also this triangular uh, composition in the end that you don't find in the Bozzetti, but that he's achieved here, um, that really emphasizes the central group, but also the figures on the side uh, and the whole purpose and meaning of this uh, monumental painting. I mean, it's it's massive, it's two by 3.5 meters, um, is to emphasize the Egyptianness of each of these figures and how despite all the modernity and all the, the new technology, uh, yeah. the new way of life that was uh, happening in the 1930s, 40s in Egypt, how it doesn't affect these figures and they proudly stand as uh, Egyptians, as a traditional juice seller, as uh, the Felaha and the women of Bahari, yeah. uh, which is that district in Alexandria um, where, uh, where these typical women would be found. Um, and bearing in mind that this painting, this large painting, the destination was uh, L'Exposition Universelle of 1937 in Paris. So, for the pavilion of uh, Egypt. So it was one of the monumental uh, panels that was commissioned most likely uh, to Mahmoud Said by Mahmoud Khalil um, for the 1937 exhibition. So it's a statement of uh, Egyptianness, basically, um, proudly standing against, in a way, accepting modernity, but also not forgetting their identity. Thank you, Valerie, for uh, joining this uh, conversation. No, my and, pleasure. Thank you. And what are your next projects? Well, <laughs> there's, a few, there's a few uh, on the table. Um, we have the Mahmoud, the, sorry, the Abdul Hadi Al Ghazar catalogue raisonné. Uh, which um, unfortunately, I mean, this whole year has been complicated for everyone. And fortunately, I haven't been able to travel to Egypt, but uh, we've, we've done a lot and recorded and archived a lot of paintings. We're almost there. So it's more a question of putting it all together. Uh, and then there's the publication of Emi Azar, uh, seminal book on modern Egyptian art that was published in French uh, La Peinture Moderne en Egypte in 1961, which until today, well, remains quite a, a comprehensive book on uh, the modern art scene in Egypt in the 1960s. And it gives quite a good um, picture of how the first generation of artists, second generation of artists, and third generation of artists, and, and all the foreign artists, how all of this created the modern art scene in Egypt. Yeah. So I translated that into English and uh, together again with Dr. Rashwan, all these projects are uh, in co-authorship with Dr. Rashwan. Um, we have photographed more than uh, 700 artworks in museums in Egypt uh, to illustrate Emi Azar's book as faithfully as the original edition. Uh, so that is almost at a final stage two. Uh, and um, hopefully we, there should be also a project with the Mohammed and Efat Nagy yeah. um, uh, monograph. Um, so this would be working hand in hand with Art d'Egypte. Um, and actually uh, we're very proud, well, I'm very proud uh, to include a section um, of paintings by Mohammed and Efat Nagy from the Nagy estate 
in uh, my next um, Impressionist and Modern Art sale that will take place in Paris on the 14th of April. Um, so it's quite a first, but we're giving um, Nagy's uh, international exposure also because they were very linked to André Lott, so an artist that we have almost in every sale in Paris. Um, so hopefully all these books, I uh, just need uh, days uh, that are long, 50 hours, <laughs> and then uh, these books will come out tomorrow. Um, now, Valérie, you work uh, in Paris, but why is it still important for you to work on uh, documenting Arab art? I think I've said it as my mission, <laughs> uh, and I find it just very frustrating as an art historian um, to go in any library and to just struggle to just find one book on modern Egyptian art. Well, now there's a bit more so, but when I started, there was really nothing. Um, and to not be able to um, talk about all these artists to people who have no idea who they are and just say, oh, well, there's this catalog resume or there's this monograph on this artist, you can learn all about him. Um, so we need to get to the stage where um, I think it's also part of a cultural heritage that is in danger. I mean, I think all the cu cultural heritage now are all in danger. So the more we record, the better it is. And I think we're already quite late in doing that. Um, but there's so much to discover and to, to, to share with the international uh, art historian uh, platform um, in terms of Middle Eastern art and to, to stop also labeling it as Middle Eastern art. I mean, it's part of the history of art is we need to just bring them back into that art history sphere um, so that they have their place. And, and it's quite interesting actually to compare um, and contrast um, these artists. Um, and most importantly, I think also it's to, um, there's a, well, being in the art market, I see it every day, unfortunately, even in, in Impressionist and modern art is uh, we see fakes every single day. So um, you can easily fake works that are not recorded anywhere. Uh, it's probably, I mean, I could do it, it's very easy to do. So we need to stop this uh, by uh, documenting properly, by archiving properly, by using all this oral history that we're very lucky to have uh, still today, uh, such as Dr. Rashwan, who has so much knowledge um, we need to record it somewhere. And I think um, uh, even for Abdul Hadi Al Ghazar, we're very lucky that um, his widow is still uh, alive and the three daughters, they are very um, well aware of their father's oeuvre and it's uh, very important to record their, um, their memories and what they know, or especially for all these artists where very, I mean, there were a lot of exhibitions, but often there were no exhibition catalogs, for example, produced. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that a lot is all in Arabic. So, I mean, fantastic. And, and, and I am getting better at my Arabic. I had even prepared a little intro to say in Arabic, yeah. but uh, I didn't practice enough, so it'll be for next time. Um, but I think we need to give them more exposure by just very simply um, publishing books in English um, to make, just to give it more um, international <laughs> access. Yeah. Thank you so much. I wish thank you all you. the best for your upcoming projects. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And it's, it's a treat to see those paintings. Yes. Behind. <laughs> I wish I was there. <laughs> thank you, Abdul. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.